It's early March here in western New York, and it's a good time to talk about conifer trees, otherwise known as softwoods. That's because while the leaves aren't on, they won't conceal the ones we're talking about. A softwood or conifer tree is anything with needles as opposed to leaves. Uh, an evergreen tree, basically. Now that has no bearing on whether its wood is actually hard or soft. It's common for the lower limbs of conifer trees to be dead because as the tree grows and gains height and adds limbs up top it no long, longer needs these bottom ones so they die and break off eventually. White pine are capable of growing till they get real big and majestic looking. White pine is susceptible to attacks from a weevil that attacks the leading shoot of a, of a young growing white pine tree. And when that happens, when the tree is a sapling, it'll result in a form like you see here. It'll be multiple stemmed and it'll be very crooked. And the, for some reason the weevil leaves the tree alone once it gets fairly tall. So when you grow a tree above about 25 feet tall, it's home free. So in places where the pine grows fast, like on gravel or sand, uh, the, the, tree, the trees will often have better form than ones that grow on clay or in uh, more poorly drained ground. I'm just going to let the camera linger over the bark of the white pine so you can study it a little bit. So any pine, their needles will grow in clusters. And if you pull out one of the clusters, the best way to remember a white pine is that the needles will come in groups of five. W-H-I-T-E. That's how you remember. The needles tend to be about three inches long. As you can see, white pine are capable of putting out a real impressive cone. They're not all going to be that big, but kind of close to my heart. That's the main state flower, is the pine cone and tassel. All the white streaks you see, that's sap running out of these woodpecker holes. White pine, uh, whenever it's injured or damaged by woodpeckers or has a limb broken from a windstorm, it'll ooze sap like this and attempt to close off the wound. And well, because of its soft wood, white pine is something that woodpeckers rather like to attack. What was considered red pine a really handsome tree? It tends to grow ramrod straight and really tall. And the top will be just this little clump way up at the tip of a long pole. Red pine bark is quite flaky. You can easily peel flakes off by hand and that under bark uh, will be quite reddish, especially when the sun's shining on it. So that's one of the giveaways. Red pine needles are longer than any other pine that I find in my travels in New York. They, uh, you know, five to seven inches long and they're in groups of two. And red pine sap and lumber uh, has, like white pine, it has a turpentine smell to it. Uh, for good reason. Turpentine is made from pine sap. Red pine cones are tight like this when they first drop. And then they open up to look almost round. But they're kind of small and roly-poly like that. In their native Europe, I understand that scotch pine are an important commercial crop. Here in New York, scotch pine are considered a weed tree. They have a great tendency to grow crooked and they are full of big dead knots which would make the, the lumber very weak. So we don't care for them too much in the logging world in New York State. But the biggest giveaway uh, of identifying a scotch pine the orange upper part of the trunk will just be this bright orange like you can see. 
Scotch pine needles will not be as thin and long as white pine needles. They're, they're stubbier and they come in clusters of two. And there's the cone of the Scotch pine. It's kind of tapered at the tip like you see. And it's got these pointy things on the outside. Hemlock are capable of getting really big and really old. Uh, I, I'm told they can live to be about 700 years old. And this one here is about two and a half foot through. And hemlock will grow in swamps. It can tolerate growing in the mushiest ground there is, but it can also grow on hillsides too. Stands of pure or mixed hemlock often have this characteristic where nothing can grow in the understory. The, the hemlocks shade the ground so efficiently that no other trees can germinate in their shadow. It leaves it very open like this. Here's the bark of the hemlock and it's a little difficult to describe but uh, I'll show you up and down the trunk a little bit. One thing about hemlock is that it does not ooze pitch of any kind. There will be no sap oozing from, from a hemlock trunk. Hemlock needles are short and flat. There's nothing jabby about them. They won't they won't poke you like a spruce needle would. They're going to be lighter on the underside than they are on the top. Let's see how close I can get with this. And again, if you crush the needles or break the twig, you won't really smell anything. Most of these softwoods have some kind of uh, aroma to them, not so for the hemlock. Hemlock lumber is not strong because of its tendency to split. However, it's really resistant to rot, which made it ideal for sheathing my barn with. Norway spruce tend to grow with a classic spire shape like you see here. There's another pair of them over there. Norway spruce has one dead giveaway. You'll have a leading limb and all of the twigs will droop from that leading limb. No other spruce looks like that. Any spruce tree will have needles that are sharp and pokey. It's almost painful when you, when you touch it because they're hard and sharp. And they are aromatic, as any of you who have live Christmas trees know. If you look at the top, you can see clusters of cones hanging from the limbs up there. Norway spruce's cones are pretty long. You know, about five inches long and scaly like this. This one's opened up so the seeds have been dropped. There aren't a ton of cedar trees in New York, in, in western New York. And where you find them, they don't grow all that great. But we do have a few. Now you get on the other side of Lake Ontario and they have tons of cedar up there in Ontario. Now you see a rather sharp line where the where the, the needles begin on this tree, and that's from deer browse. Deer love to browse on cedar needles. And uh, they go up pretty tall because last winter there was a snowbank here, and the deer would climb right up on the snowbank and browse as high into the tree as they could. Cedar have kind of a fractal pattern to their needles. They're flat and scaly and that's the underside of it right there. The deer love to browse these. Cedar bark is uh, long vertical strips like this. You can reach out and peel strips off these. And cedar lumber is very durable. It uh, can withstand weather for a long time. But rarely do we grow them in western New York to where you could saw them into anything. The cones of a cedar are these tiny little things and they open up to drop their seed. These are open. But they're small and there's not much to them. Certainly not compared to a pine or a spruce. <laughs> 